Hello, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Seek Him Early Prayer Call. We are getting together, as we always do on Wednesday mornings, to corporately seek the Lord, to pursue God, to, to pursue an encounter with the Lord, to pursue a touch uh, from Jesus. Come on, somebody, to pursue the presence of the Holy Ghost, to, pr to pursue our God, because we understand that every single thing we need is in the presence of God, whatever you have need of today. So, so listen, just go ahead and just start to think about what you need. Begin to think about what you have need of in your life. Begin to think of the areas that you truly need the Lord to touch. Maybe it is your marriage. Maybe it is, uh, maybe, maybe you're believing for marriage. Maybe it is your children. Maybe it is your finances. Maybe it is your health. Maybe you are struggling with depression or anxiety. Begin to think about uh, a, 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 the, the specific area that you need God to touch. Now, now grasp this truth. So powerful. Everything you need is in the presence of God. Maybe you need money. Maybe you are really in a bad place financially. Maybe you are literally on your last leg. Maybe you are one who everything looks good on the outside and you have become so skilled. Oh, I feel like I'm talking to somebody in particular. You have become so skilled at holding it together. You pull, together, you pull yourself together very well. You know how to look good. You know how to sound good. You're very good at helping other people, but secretly you continue to struggle with some private things. Secretly you continue to struggle with things that have been stressing you out and seem to have been following you for far too long. Understand this, child of God, Everything you need is in the presence of your God. Your health is in the presence of God. Restoration of your marriage can happen just like that in the presence of God. Deliverance from your addiction can happen in the presence of God just like that. The release of the financial blessing that you need can happen in the presence of God. So listen, what we do on Wednesday mornings, and we do it every morning, even when I'm traveling, or every Wednesday morning, even when I'm traveling, because we got to have more Jesus in our lives. We understand that everything I just said is 100% true. We get together Wednesday morning fervently, feverishly, ruthlessly. Oh, we are pursuing God. And because we understand that when we prioritize the Lord... Isn't it interesting how he begins to prioritize us? When we mean business with God, he means business with us. I just speak a blessing over you right now. Let's go ahead and kick this off. I decree and declare that you are coming into a season where you are going to see more God in your life. You are going to see the presence of God manifest in your life. It's going to just saturate you. I don't know if you caught this word on social media last night. John, I'm getting all stirred up. I don't know, I don't know if you caught this word on social media last night but you know every once in a while the Holy Spirit puts this on my heart to say this and it's always the same I love it uh, and, and, and that is this according to Deuteronomy 28 2 I pray that every single blessing that has your name on it begins to pursue you you ever see like those those missiles that the that the um, the military can fire there are those heat seeking missiles and you can't run from them they will find you they're coming after you they're gonna get you if it belongs to you right now I pray that every single blessing with your name on it begins to just pursue you overtake you it, it's gonna find you if it's got your name on it I decree and declare that you are shifting into a place in God where everything that has been assigned to you will begin to line up for you and appear in your life. Do you receive that in the name of Jesus? I decree and declare no more delays, no more delays, no more delays. God is bringing us into a season. I've been saying this for quite some time, but he, John knows, he began speaking about it again last night uh, and again this morning uh, over and over. We are in a season Season where the Lord is very interested in helping you to build your house. Say, build my house. Say, build my house. Build my house. Build my house. Now, for some of you, uh, in the name of Jesus, I need to prophesy that it's going to literally be the building of a house. 
Oh, yes. I'm going to get some praise reports. John, watch it happen. They're, they're going to start coming in. There are going to be some testimonies from people who say, my God, prophet, I never thought that I would actually build a house. I was really just hoping to be able to buy a house. But my goodness, the Lord blessed us with new construction. Huh? Uh, my goodness, uh, I was the first one to, to be able to, to live in that house because it was a brand new house. Yes. For many of you, it will mean the literal construction of a house. But hear me, people of God. The Lord says, hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. My God, I feel the Lord on this. My God, I feel the Lord. Hallelujah. Every single spirit that has been called. Every single spirit that has been assigned to you to hold you back, hold you down, shut doors. Yes, they will do that. They will try to do that. And if you don't have a full grasp on the authority that you have access to, you won't be able to stop it. You won't be able to, to cut those jokers off at the pass. But I hear the voice of the Lord saying that he is arresting some of them on your behalf. He is rebuking some of the, some of, for some of you, the devourer is being rebuked on your behalf. Now that's according to Malachi 3.11. Praise God. We all know how to quote Malachi 3.10. Do you know what Malachi 3.11 says? But God said that he is rebuking the devourer on behalf of some of you. That for What is that going to mean for you? That means that your delays are going to be over. That you're going to begin to, to uh, experience acceleration. You're going to begin to experience uh, what it means to actually encounter the favor of God. You've been hearing other people talk about favor. You've been hearing other people talk about breakthrough. Come on, somebody. But the Lord said that he's going to accelerate some of you by rebuking the devourer on your behalf so that you can experience acceleration and breakthrough. Hallelujah. Now, he wants to do this for a very specific purpose. I told you this is a prophetic prayer call. We don't mess around. I'm a prophet. I have to prophesy when the Lord says to prophesy. Hallelujah. He wants to build your house. God says that your years and your seasons of wandering must be over. He wants to establish you. He wants to move you into a place of stability. He wants to move you into a place of solidity. No more loose ends. Everything looks good on the outside, but then you got loose ends on the backside. Stuff that nobody even knows about, but you know about it. And I I hear the voice of the Lord saying that for some of you, this is going to be very specific for some people on the call, hallelujah to Jesus, but for some of you, the reason, it's really one of the primary reasons, he has not been able to release to you some of the things you're believing for, some of the things that you have been asking for, even some of the things he has planned for you, you got to get this, this is very serious. Is because you don't have the stability to receive it. You need to tie up your loose ends. You know, the, the prophet Isaiah went to King Hezekiah and he said, get your house in order. Now, um, John and I were talking about this on yesterday. Praise God. We're not even into our material yet, but just stay with me. But the, the prophet Isaiah went to Hezekiah. He said, dude, I, you know, good news, bad news. Um, you, you, you're going to die. So, um, but you have time to get your, your, your house in order. Now, <clears throat> the interesting thing is, you know, a, a, a lot of people say, well, you know, the, the, the King Hezekiah was being given an opportunity to make his plans, to get himself together. And, you know, you, you, you got to tie up loose ends, you got to organize things. And maybe you want to plan your own funeral. I mean, I don't know. You Go around, apologize to who you need to apologize to. Uh, tell I love you to the one. But, but, but really, the revelation that I caught out of that that even though he was a king, catch this, oh, glory to God, even though he was a king, even though he was a reigning king, there were still some things in his life that were out of order. They may not have been apparent to everybody else who thought that he was just the bee's knees. They may not have been apparent to everybody who thought King Hezekiah was a bad dude, all right? And maybe he was a bad dude. 
But guess what? He still had some areas in his life that needed to get in order. The prophet could have said anything, but he chose those words very specifically. If we had more time, I would get into the Hebraic breakdown, which I have studied. Hallelujah to Jesus. But it implied that there were some things in that man's life that were not in alignment with the standard of God. Hear me, people of God. The Lord is a level of order that we can't comprehend. The Lord is a level of righteousness and precision that, trust me, we can't, we, we can't even get it. In order for many of you to get the financial blessing, to get the increase in your business, to get the increase in your ministry, to get the, the marriage that you are praying for, God needs for you to bring your life in order. Close every open door. Uh, tie up your loose ends. Matter of fact, you need to shut the back doors. Some of you have some back end stuff open where the devil could legally attack you through. You hear me? The devil could legally attack you through some back doors that are open. I don't even know who this is for. Hallelujah to God. But the Lord said that, that he is moving you into a time of establishment. He wants, to, he wants you to build your house. 2018 is the year for you to build your house. Here's a word for somebody in particular. The man of God, hallelujah. Ooh, you are a woman of God. You are a woman of God. You are a woman of God. And the man of God that, that the Lord has already selected for you is on a level to where you cannot be a damsel in distress when he meets you. Oh, you will be his queen. He will cover you. But he's going to need to, to know that he has truly met his rib mate. Hallelujah to Jesus. So, so that's a word for somebody. This is part of what we do uh, on the Wednesday morning prayer call. It gets real prophetic real quick um, because this is a prophetic ministry. From the time I was a little girl, um, I have been um, a prophet. You know, the Lord just made that very clear to me. And by the time I was 11 years old, uh, my dreams and visions from the Lord, nothing to do with me, praise God, but my dreams and visions from God would manifest sometimes as quickly as like, you know, 24 hours or less. So this is just who, 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 we, who we are through this ministry. Hallelujah. And I want you to know something very, very um, clearly. And I, I feel compelled to say this strongly. I pray for you. This is a praying ministry. John can be my witness right now. Um, I don't have to get up at 4 a.m. for the prayer calls, but I very often do, uh, no matter how tired I am, because I can sleep t tonight, huh. okay? So no matter how tired I am, why? Well, I ha actually, I won't show it, but I wanna, I'm just gonna hold this up because this is a list, I, and I can't, it's a full list. You can probably... See, you know, it's actually printed for uh, five columns of people who um, support this ministry, uh, pr just partner with us, uh, sow into us, are right, or, or hear me, or regularly request prayer. I pray for you. I'm praying for your family. Here's what I prayed this morning. I'm praying it. I'm praying for you right now. This is what I'm praying for you. Everybody who is listening. All the people under the sound of my voice, I'm praying for your finances. I'm praying for your health. I'm praying for your marriage. If you are not married, I'm praying for your future marriage. Hallelujah. I'm praying for a protection around you. I'm praying for increase over your household. I'm praying that you literally have a full pantry and a full refrigerator. I'm praying for debt forgiveness for you. I'm praying for your businesses to be successful. Hallelujah. I told the Lord this morning, I said, God, let your glory descend upon their lives. Let your glory descend upon their lives so that their lives speak so that their lives speak, so that when people see you, they automatically know something about your God. They look at you and they say, I don't even know what's going on with them. I, don't, I can't even comprehend how they went from the bottom to the top so quickly. And then that gives you the opportunity to say, you got to get my Jesus. You got to get into the kingdom of God because God is a good God. Come on. He is a good God. He, he loves us. He is a good, good father. He is a benevolent father. He is magnificent. He is mighty. He will fight your battles. He will provide for you. Hallelujah. These are the things that I was praying for you even on this morning. Hallelujah. And the Lord began speaking to me about you and about this being a season where he begins to establish 
your house. Now, right now, hear me. I'm going to share something with you that really is going to blow somebody's mind. All right. By the way, um, I very rarely ask people to share stuff anymore because, you know, I just, I don't know. I get in these flows, to be honest. I just get in a flow, you know, but I got to get better about that. So if you have not shared what we are about to do next is going to be such a powerful blessing. I want to encourage you to share this with some other people. Go ahead and share this on whatever social media platform you feel led to. I'll give you one second to go ahead and do that. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Facebook. Share it to your followers. Amen. Uh, and however else you want to share it. Praise God. Uh, what we are about to do next, I believe, is going to bless a lot of people. It's not about me. You're not going to hear me promote myself. I'm just, this is just not how I run. Um, but, but, but I do want to bless people. I do want people to encounter God. I do want people to encounter the love of Jesus. And I want people to encounter the favor of God. The favor of God. Hallelujah. I decree and declare prophetically favor over your life in the mighty and matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach. See, some people have a problem with favor. Some people are, are you know, they just, they feel guilty about the favor of God. Listen, baby, you can't feel guilty about favor. You can't feel guilty about receiving what it is that God wants to give you. You can't be embarrassed about it. And don't you dare minimize it. Because when your daddy gives you something, when he blesses you, with something. Listen, it's nothing to be ashamed of and you can't apologize for it either because the reality is if he does it for you, he will do it for them. He is no respecter of persons. Amen. So I just want to share something with you really quick, very, very quickly. Then we're going to pray. We're going to decree some things over your life and I have to release some prophetic words. Amen. Hallelujah. So the other day, this is so good. The other, <laughs> the other day, I went into a store to buy a gift for a pastor's wife um, who, who um, invited, uh, invited me to speak at their church, okay? So um, I, I like to give presents and I like to bless people. Uh, and, and, and understand me, the Lord, when he sees that you are that kind, when he sees that that is who you really are, and you're not just doing it because, you know, because you think you should, but you really want to be a giver. Oh, praise God. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. When he knows that he can get blessings through you, he'll start giving blessings to you. Oh, come on. So, so, so uh, I went into this, into a store to buy a gift for a pastor's wife. John, you got to say right out loud what happened, or I just say yes when, when I get, get to the point. So John's right there. Before I leave the store, the, the cashier says to me, now I pay and I'm leaving. I'm leaving. We're done. I made my transaction. We're out, right? The, the girl says to me, she goes, oh, hold on a minute. And I see her and she's like putting stuff together and she hands me this bag. She goes, this is for you. All right, I don't know if you know Aveda products, but they're very expensive, and they are the bomb.com. Oh, they are the bomb diggity, right? I love Aveda. And in the course of the transaction, I just happened to mention to her some of one of my favorite products. I said, oh, I love that product. And she goes, oh, you do? I said, yes, I love it. Oh, that, the scent is just insane. It's beautiful. And, and so I bought the pastor's wife a gift. This girl called me back. She loaded up. I think there was like three products of, the, of what I like in here and just gave it to me for free. My daughter looked at me and she said, that was favor. I said, yeah, that was favor. That's what, that's what favor is. Because Luke 6 and 38 says that as you give, it will be given to you. Right now, I pray a Luke 6 and 38 blessing over you that you begin to receive back exactly the way you give. See, you're such a giver. You are such a cheerful giver. You are a, a generous person. You are a loving person. I decree and declare Luke 6 and 38 over you that men are just going to start giving you stuff. People are just going to start giving you stuff. They're just going to start pouring out to you, amen, the way that you pour out to them. All right. So now listen, this is a true story. Then we're going to get into our prayer call because I got to share this with you. So then yesterday, the spirit of the Lord arrested me that that's a nice gift, but I might want to do a little more. I, I didn't, I couldn't even understand it. I believe it's going to be very prophetic. All right. And I said, John, I got to go get her one thing in particular. I, don't, I can't explain it. I don't know why. She'll explain it to me. But this woman's got to have, you know, something from, okay? And I, it was a very specific item. 
So I go to the Swarovski store. Do I have anybody who likes Swarovski jewelry? Or is, is it just me? So I go in Swarovski. Yes or no, John? So I buy the first lady a beautiful necklace, right? Beautiful necklace. I'm literally handing the, the, the cashier my debit card. She runs it. She turns around. She goes, and I'm going to give these to you for free. John, yes or no? Yes. You got to say it louder. Yes. John. Yes. <laughs> I said, huh? Look at my earrings. I got them for free yesterday. I didn't pay for these earrings. These are beautiful Swarovski. Listen, the Lord will bless you because you're a giver. I decree and declare a Luke 6 and 38 blessing over you in the name of Jesus. People are simply going to start giving to you. They're going to begin to pour out to you. It's going to be exceedingly abundantly. It's going to come at a time when you don't even expect it. It's going to come when you're not even looking for it. You're not even asking for it. But the Lord has seen how you give. The Lord has seen how you are just... Uh, you love people and you love to pour out to them and he is going to return to you exactly what you are giving. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, if you are in Atlanta, I just want to say, hey, I'm in Atlanta too. I do have a private uh, event this weekend. I can't uh, wait for that. Please hold me in prayer. This is a great event. I'm really looking forward to it. But then on April 6th, I will be in Greensboro, North Carolina. Go to my, um, is it on the website yet, John? Nope. Okay, so it'll be on the website hopefully today, but it's all over my social media, and you can register for that event. It's a women's event. It's going to be off the chain. The, the speaker lineup is phenomenal. April 15th, Grace Bessemer Church, right outside of Birmingham. It is a 6.30 p.m. prophetic meeting, so you definitely want to be in that service if you have um, the ability to get there. I have a brand new Florida date for May 19th, Somerville, Florida. All that information will be um, released via social media. I hope um, this week they said they're going to get the flyer done. Praise God. But that is from May 19th in Florida. So if you can get there, that'll be amazing. Another uh, just phenomenal event. Praise God. So um, on Wednesdays, we seek the Lord together corporately. We do not run from God. We run to God. We do not run from the call on our lives. We say yes to the call on our lives. And I just want to encourage somebody. I, I felt it last night and there's an anointing for it presently as well. That God said that it's time to come out of hesitation and procrastination. He wants you to see you the way he sees you. There are some people under the sound of my voice right now. You know the Lord has given you a book to write. You know the Lord has given you songs to write. You know the Lord is calling you to try out for that worship team. Come on. You know that God has told you to do something. And the Lord said it is not a time or a season for you to have fear because he never gave you a spirit of fear. It is a time for you to really push ahead. And God said he's going to be blessing your effort. He's going to be blessing your effort because obedience is so powerful to the Lord. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Come on. And there is an anointing right now for you to be successful. There is an anointing right now for you to accelerate in that regard. I need you to receive it and step into it boldly. Step into your destiny boldly in the name of Jesus. God wants me to say as well that you have no idea what it will lead to. You really have no idea. One thing will lead to another thing will lead to another thing. And it, it, it will actually end up going much better than you think. Praise God. Isaiah 26 verse 9. With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. That's what we do. That's what we do. Too many of us stress out at night. Those spirits of anxieties come to call. Those vexing spirits begin to mess with our minds. Come on. You, you, you know what happens. And, and maybe some of you listening right now, it might have happened to you last night. Where you were literally in bed trying to sleep. And it, as soon as the lights go out, your mind quiets down. And you begin to think about all the things that are wrong. All the things that you really need God to touch all the things that are just weighing on your heart. See, that's why we seek God because everything you need, your breakthrough, your solution, your blessing, come on somebody, it's all in the presence of God. I have a word about that in a moment. Praise God. You're gonna find God. You're going to encounter him in a brand new way in this area, in this era rather of your life, era, E-R-A, of your life. 
God wants to know you on a deeper level. He wants to pull you closer to him. Oh, hear me, somebody. He wants you to pull you closer to him so that you can go deeper in your relationship with him. And as a result, you'll go higher into your destiny. Hallelujah. Now, according to our corporate decrees, we, we, um, we align ourselves with Proverbs 18 and 21 and also James 3 and 10 because our words have power. Our words have power. Will you join me? Just go ahead and repeat after me. We're going to take authority over some things and loose some blessings in our lives. Hallelujah. Because we understand that what we speak, we will see. What we speak, we will see. So we speak the things that we want to see manifest in our lives. Hallelujah. Go ahead and say this. I am healed. Come on, say it. I am healed. Even if you don't feel well today. Even if you're not feeling great right now, oh, I overturn that by the blood of Jesus and so do you. Say it. Defy the devil. Tell that joker who's in charge. Say, I am healed. I am whole. Come on, say, I am whole. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and never beneath. I am a child of the Most High God. Mm. I walk in favor. My God causes doors to open before me. I give praises to my God for all he does. I will prosper. I am here to thrive, not just survive. I am stepping into my season. This is my season of growth. This is my season of breakthrough. This is my season of victory. My season of more. I am stepping into favor. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. According to Ezekiel 22 and 30, we continue to stand in the gap for loved ones, family, and friends who are not yet saved. We don't receive that. We don't believe it. We don't come into agreement with that. We speak salvation over them in the name of Jesus. They shall be saved. Joshua 24 and 15 is our decree. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And we stand in the gap for them. We pray to the Lord on their behalf. We ask the Lord for more time, more grace, more mercy. We ask God to give them a Holy Ghost experience. God, give them a Holy Ghost encounter. If you did it for psycho soul, you can do it for my husband, Lord. Not my husband, but maybe, maybe yours. If you did it for psycho soul, you can do it for my children. If you did it for, for me, Lord, you can do it for my, my, my coworkers, my neighbors, whoever it is that you are standing in the gap for. We are believing for the Lord to give them a Holy Ghost experience and bring them on into Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, according to Deuteronomy 28, 13, we decree and declare that we're the head and not the tail. That's what God said. That's what God said. And that means that no discrimination, no condescending behavior can ever make us feel like we are lesser than. Doesn't matter what they say. Doesn't matter how they treat us. We know who we are. We don't receive it. Back that up. You better change your narrative. You need to change the way you're speaking to me because I am royal. I am the head and not the tail. We don't receive it. Praise God. We also do not stress out about our enemies. We're not worried about the people who talk about us. We're not worried about the people who hurt us. It doesn't mean that it did not affect us. It doesn't mean that it wasn't real. But we understand the power of Psalm 23 verse 7. Yeah. Psalm 23 verse 7 says that God will prepare a table for us in the presence of our enemies. One translation says that he will prepare a six-course meal. Now, some of y'all been fasting. Come on now. I, I'm not trying to make you salivate, but a six-course meal. That means that when God gets ready to bless you, he's going to do it in front of everybody. The people who, who hurt you. The people who abused you, the people who ran you off the road and left you for dead, the people who betrayed you, the, the, the people who just talked to you so bad. How could they say those things to somebody? How could they do what they did? My God, how could somebody do what they did? But God saw it all. Oh, I feel this prophetically for somebody. The Lord says, I saw it. I saw what they did. I heard what they said. 
Oh, I wrote it down. <laughs> it's in my book. I know exactly what happened. I know when it happened. I can tell you the date, the time, down to the minute. And I've got something planned. It's my Supernatural Clapback program. They are automatically enrolled in my Supernatural Clapback program program welcome to the program what what do you what are your benefits in the program you get a supernatural clap back i'm going to bless the person you hurt i'm going to exalt the person you hurt i'm going to restore the person you hurt i'm going to prosper the person you hurt and you sir you ma'am are going to have to have a front row seat and watch that's his program now guys we got to try not to, i mean some of you just want to run, I know. Some of you just want, you're salivating over that. We have to try not to salivate too much, but it is delicious, okay? It is delicious. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. But that's his program. Amen. Praise God for supernatural recompense. And that really is what the Lord is saying in that. And I know I, I kind of made it silly, but he's talking about supernatural recompense that he will deal with your enemies for you and one of the ways he's going to deal with them is he's going to bless you in front of them praise god now our prayer prompt for today and we're going to get through this very quickly is authority say authority say authority authority you have authority over things in your life that you are currently stressed about did you know that are you aware the things that you are currently stressed about the things that you currently you know, that are just weighing on you. You actually have authority over those things. Hallelujah. Because God has given you authority in the earth. Say, I have authority in the earth. Go ahead, say it again. I have authority in the earth. Matthew 28, 18 through 20, it says this, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Now listen, that's what Jesus wants us to do. That's the single most important thing on the planet. It is literally the, the most important thing on planet Earth, letting people know the reality of Jesus and his imminent return. However... The devil does not want you to concentrate on that. So he will attack your personal life. So he will attack your children. He will attack your, your relationships. He will attack your body. He will attack your finances because he does not, well, he doesn't want you to walk in the fullness of, of God's favor. And he especially does not want you to walk empowered so that you can fulfill that command. I mean, it, it, this stuff gets real deep. That's really his ultimate goal. Amen. But you have authority over the devil and you have authority over every area of your life. The devil is already a defeated foe. Jesus already made an open show of him and all his joker principalities when he, when he conquered sin and death. All right, so that's over, done, and over. You have authority over him and every area of your life. I hear God saying, start talking to your problems. Talk to your problems. Don't talk about them. Talk to your problems. Don't talk about them. Get mouthy. You got to get mouthy with your problems. Somebody say, I got to get mouthy. I got to get mouthy. Get mouthy with your problems. Uh, Mark 11 and 23 says this. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Hey, start talking to your body. Yeah, start talking to your body. Start talking to your mind. Start <clears throat> talking to your emotions. Describe yourself with authority according to the way you know God desires to see you. You got to say, body, body, you are healthy. You are full of energy in the name of Jesus. Now, now go ahead and say, mind, you are clear. Mind, you are focused, you are calm, and outrageously smart in the name of Jesus. Emotions, you are in check. I do not go by how I feel, I go by the word of God. Now, uh-oh, now we get to it. God told me last night that I need to announce today to some of y'all to stop going by how you feel. You gotta go on, by, go by the word of God. 
It's not about how you feel. What does the word of God say? Don't go by what you see going on. What does the word of God say about these types of matters? For example, your kids begin to speak to talk back to you. Your kids begin to be rebellious. Joshua 24 and 15 as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. God, thank you that my children are respectful. God, thank you that all of a sudden they're just going to come to their right mind and they're going to say, Mom, I'm sorry. Dad, I'm sorry. My goodness, can I, can I wash the dishes every day for the rest of my life? Thank you, Lord, that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Marriage under attack? Ecclesiastes 4 and 12, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves, but a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. God, thank you that you are coming into my marriage and this marriage will not fall apart. God, thank you that your spirit is descending and binding us together stronger than ever, God, and we will have full restoration in this marriage. Some of you, so much stress going on in your life that you're afraid of what's going to happen at work. Wait a minute, God did not give you the spirit of a fear. Of fear. You need to step into authority. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Those people need to be afraid of you at your job. Don't be afraid of what's going to happen at work. They need to be afraid of you because you have authority in the earth. You have authority to decree and declare. Somebody said, but prophet, I feel like I'm going to lose my job. Actually, prophet, I actually just got fired. Well, listen, the Bible says that God promises to supply all your needs. Stand on that word. Go to the Lord according to Matthew 6 and 33 and say, thank you, God, that I don't have to be afraid. Thank you, God, that you know exactly what I need. You know the timetable of my bills and you will provide all my needs in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you that you are lining up new opportunities for me. Even now, God, I thank you that I do not have to be afraid because my Abba Daddy is on my side. My Abba Daddy takes care of me. And when my daddy shows up, stuff goes down. God, I thank you that you provide all my needs. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. And God said, start talking to your problems, not about them. You have authority. You're going to see your lives begin to shift according to what you talk about. Please don't talk about it anymore. Don't write letters about it. Don't post comments about it. Don't send emails about it. T just talk about it according to the word of God. Take authority over it according to the word of God. Hallelujah. Bring it all into submission under the blood of Jesus. Bring it all into submission under the blood of Jesus. I decree and declare right now prophetically that everybody under the sound of my voice is coming into a fresh anointing of, of personal authority so that you can walk and speak in authority in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus covers you right now. The blood of Jesus is over your household. The blood of Jesus is over your finances. The blood of Jesus is over your body. The blood of Jesus is over your mind in the name of Jesus. You will have no thoughts that are not of God. You will pursue no thing that is not of God. You will entertain no suitors that are not of God. You will receive no opportunities that are not of God. You are under the blood of Jesus, only the highest and the best for you. I prophesy Psalm 37, 23 over you, that you are going to find your steps ordered by the Lord. God is going to lead you to the right places, the right people, the right opportunities at the right time. This is a time of open doors for you. This is a time of alignment for you. Even as the Lord establishes you, even as he continues to build your house, do you see the power of this season? It is a time of personal elevation. The Lord seeks to elevate you on all levels. He wants to establish you. He wants to prosper you. He wants to heal you on all levels in the name of Jesus. It's your year of elevation. It's your year of elevation. I lose legacy over you in the name of Jesus. 
legacy, the blessing that you're about to receive, the blessing that you're going to step into, what you are going to build, what you are going to establish, what God is going to establish and loose in, in the earth through you is going to be so much bigger than just you, baby. It's going to spill over onto your children. You're going to leave an inheritance to your children should Jesus tarry. Hallelujah. I loose extreme financial increase over you. Extreme, extreme, extreme financial increase over you. There are people who tell me, will you stop talking about money? Preach the gospel. Listen, this is part of it because the Lord needs for you to live in an empowered state. God does not want you to live broken down, busted apart, disgusted with life. Now you're questioning God. You're questioning your faith. You can't take care of yourself. You certainly can't help anybody else. How is that God? It's not. That's the devil. That's the devil. Don't get it twisted. It is Satan that wants you to be poor and God wants you to prosper. Now, I'm going to say something that's probably going to make some people mad. And I promise you, I love you, but I don't care because I have got to hear. I have got to hear. Well done, my good and faithful servant. If I don't hear, if I don't hear well done, my good and faithful servant, then I have failed. The Lord told me to prophesy snow and it's, it began to snow everywhere in truly weird places. The Lord told me to prophesy fog and fog began to just manifest everywhere all over the world in truly bizarre places. John, yes or no, do people send us pictures and videos all over the world? Yes. Okay. The Lord told me to prophesy rain several times and sure enough, pouring torrential rain everywhere. Okay. Just multiple places all over the world. It's a very specific prophetic anointing. Hallelujah. God told me the other day to winds of change. Winds of, and I, I saw that a lot of other people jumped on the bandwagon. Yeah, wind. Well, okay, okay. And I pray that these prophetic people will begin to get, okay. But, but, but then the Lord told me, I'm going to get out of that. The Lord told me in relevant church service to say it again. And this time to say that he is going to manifest actual wind. To solidify and verify the power of the prophecy and all that comes with it for you. The blessings that come through it for you. And sure enough, we wake up to a high wind advisory over Atlanta. And now people have been emailing from all over the world and, and, and sending us all, this, all these reports of wind. Alright, I want to tell you something. The Lord is manifesting very powerfully through, through this ministry and many others, many, many others. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. And what it means for you if you are getting this message is that you are in a highly anointed time. You are in a highly anointed season. I pray. I pray, I pray fervently and, and desperately right now for you in Jesus' name that you grab a hold of every single thing that the Lord had me to speak of today. Your elevation, you're getting your house in order, you're closing open doors, you're tying up loose ends. Why? So he can bless you the way he wants to. He cannot pour into a broken container. You'll, you'll leak, honey, okay? You gotta get your affairs in order. God will speak to you. Let him speak to you. He'll tell you exactly what to do. Receive the financial blessing. Receive the word on Luke 6 and 38. Listen, I promise you, when you begin to give, God has a way of, of giving back to you exactly what you need. Okay? And now, I didn't say so earlier, but I actually needed a, a pair of small earrings like this. Right? Because I have the hoops that John gave me for Christmas, which I love. But... But God knew I needed a small pair. He will give you what you need. You have to receive every single word that came through today because the Lord wants to bless you. He wants to establish you. He wants to show you his goodness. He wants to show you that this is real. He wants to show you that the Bible is not some book of fairy tales. He wants to show you that he pays attention to you, that he hears your prayers. He knows who you are. He knows every single detail of your life, and he's just waiting to bless you. Now, waiting for what? For you to get into alignment with him, his standard, all right? And I have a tool that I'm going to be talking about very soon so I can help you do that because I, I got to hear well done, my faithful servant. 
All right, so I'll talk more about that, but not right now, because we got to wrap this up. I got I to gotta slow this train down. Hallelujah to Jesus. To the people who sowed into that prophetic word the other day, I just, I need to prepare you. And, and I'm not, I'm not being funny. I'm not trying to sound dramatic. I promise you, it's just not me. I promise you. If anything, I'm a little sarcastic, but I'm not dramatic. All right? And I can't apologize for my personality. The Lord has made me understand even with all my idiosyncrasies, you too, that he made you exactly the way you need to be to achieve what he's going to call you to do. All your characteristics are relevant. Now, he might reveal to me and to you things that we need to work on, areas that are weak that we need to strengthen. Amen. But hear me, a, a lot of your idiosyncrasies and weird little characteristics are not really weird at all. They're exactly, you're a, you're, a, you're a specific design in order to fulfill precisely what he's called you to. Amen. And God told me this morning, as I'm praying over all the names, that I need to warn these people. He said, tell them to brace themselves. They're not, they're, they're not ready. Some of them are not ready for what's coming. That, that what is coming to them is extreme restoration of marriages, extreme restoration of children. Hear me, specifically children who've been in addiction children who have gotten a hold of satanic doctrines, children who are in gender confusion, children who have been um, just broken because of molestation, bullying and abuse, extreme restoration. Single mothers, extreme restoration of your heart to where you will be able to step into the marriage that he's going to prepare for you. Extreme financial blessing. Now, I fully, I understand these people, John, it's going to happen. You need to brace yourself. John processes the prayer request. These, many of these people are going to receive financial blessings, and it, it's going to be a lump sum for many. But for, for many of you, it's going to begin to be just a stream that doesn't end. Something's going to be loose into your life, and you're, you're just going to now have where he's supplying your needs. Where, you know, when the, when the cup begins to get empty, you just see it fill right back up again. And he's just going to keep it coming. He's just going to keep it coming. And you need to understand that you're going to begin to encounter God in a brand new way. This is a new season that we're all in. Me too. Guys, it's getting freaky even for me. I'm not even going to lie. John Gray talked about, I'm going to close with this. John Gray talked about, uh, oh, Jesus, entering a zone where your prayers are answered before you even finish speaking them. That's how quick, because he already knew what you were going to pray for. And you are in such a place with God in your relationship where you're so tight with him now. You're so tight. He, he, your obedience, you've demonstrated your commitment. You have demonstrated your longevity with him. You're so, he, you're not perfect. You know, you still mess up sometimes. He knows that he expects it. You know, we got this sin thing we grapple with. He, he gets it. We got this carnal nature that we're constantly wrestling with. He knows, you know, like he expects certain things from you. Like if you have allergies, you're going to sneeze now and then because you have allergies. Well, if you get a carnal nature, you're going to, you're going to mess up now and then because you got a carnal nature. So there's things he expects but 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 by and large he knows now that you're solid with him and now you enter this zone you don't even know it's coming like he gives you little whiffs on the wind he'll give you a little glimpse so that you know there's another level and you're about to break through some some barrier it's an unseen barrier that you didn't even know was there and now you break through that barrier and all of a sudden phew, the atmosphere is different up here. This is different up here, God. What, what is this place? And that's the place where your prayers begin to be answered so quickly, so quickly, so quickly. You begin to see rapid manifestation of your decrees. You begin to receive rapidly from the Father before you even finish uttering the prayer. It's getting real freaky for me too, all right? That's what's going on in my life. And if you don't understand the way the anointing works, it is transferable. That's why we lay hands. That's why I speak and prophesy over you. I want to transfer to you what I have. And according to your readiness, you will receive it. For the people who sowed into that word last week, you need to brace yourselves because some of you are not even ready for the level of manifestation that's going to hit your life. But I know it's going to bless you. And I know you're going to freak out in a good way. 
and I know King Jesus is going to get a lot of glory, and it's all for the name and the fame of Jesus Christ anyway. It's nothing to do with me. I'm just one prophet of many in the world, and if I wasn't doing this, the Lord would raise up somebody else, all right? So I, I really have that in check. It's not about me. It's about him. I'm a servant. Uh, I'm a servant. And, and my job is to help you to get in position to access the blessings that have been assigned to you. Hallelujah. Well, if you receive that, have the boldness and the faith to say, yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, I love you all very much. Amen. No Wednesday word this week. Uh, it is a midday, 1 p.m. prophetic service. It's going to be live. This is a heavy prophetic word. The Lord has given me, um, it's multifaceted, but it's, it's pretty serious. So we are making time for that. And I want to encourage you to be with me live if you can. If you can't, it will be on the replay. Amen. On both uh, Periscope and also on YouTube. Praise God. Well, thank you very much. I love you very much. I pray this blessed you and encouraged you and also helped you to prepare for what's coming. I'll see you on social media. Until we meet again, God bless you.